Tomorrow's night, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Something. <laughs> Make a little noise here tonight. I don't want to feel like I'm in a funeral home. Praise God. I want to know that I'm in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness, right? Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to rejoice in the Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 7. Praise God. It says, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land with brooks of water, of fountains and depths, that spring out of valleys and hills. I'm going to read it to you one more time. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight from this little simple title tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Valleys and hills. Valleys and hills. Praise God. What a picture. Hallelujah. Amen. Valleys and hills. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. When I read this chapter tonight, uh, I always, I, verse 7 in this chapter always gets my attention. I feel like it's a pivotal, a pivotal verse, and I'm not saying the word right, a pivotal verse, amen, tonight. Amen. In this chapter, praise God. Very important verse of Scripture here. Amen. Uh, verse 7 of chapter 8. Praise God. And uh, something we need to, I want us to think about tonight and something I want us to just focus our attention on for just a little while on this Wednesday night. Amen. God is challenging, amen, the children of Israel. Amen. As they get ready to go into the promised land, He's challenged them. Amen. In the first seven or first six verses of Scripture of this chapter, God is challenging them to be obedient, amen, to his commandments. Praise God. It's a challenge, amen, that would be repeated hundreds and thousands of times throughout the word of God. God was always challenging the children of Israel whenever he was getting ready to do something wonderful for them and great for them. He would always challenge them. Now, I'm going to do this for you, amen, but, amen, here's what you've got to do. You've got to keep my commandments. You've got to... Keep my law. Keep my ordinances. Praise God. And again, we find God doing that in verse 1 of this chapter tonight. Praise God. And then he kind of takes them down memory lane. Amen. Just a little while. Praise God. Amen. You know, amen, he takes them down memory lane by saying, you know, you've been, I'm going to put this in my own words, okay? So I don't have to just read verbatim, amen, the word of God here tonight. But this is basically what he's doing, taking them down memory lane. He's saying, you know, you've been in this wilderness for 40 years now. Hallelujah. Amen. You've been hungry. Amen. But I've sustained you with manna for these 40 years. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then he lets them know, hey, this has been a very long test for you. This has been a very long trial for you. This has been a very long journey in this wilderness. Amen. For you. Praise God. I had to take you down these 40 years. Amen. A wilderness journey. Amen. To humble you. Hallelujah. Amen. To find out exactly where your hearts are at. Praise God. I wanted to make it clear. Amen. To you. Amen. In this wilderness journey. Hallelujah. That man does not live by bread alone. Amen. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I think, amen, that you should have gotten that by now. Amen. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the uh, the mouth of God. Hallelujah. I want you to remember, amen, this wilderness journey, amen, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, 80 years from now, amen, I want you to remember this wilderness journey. And I want you to remember that your clothes grew on your back. Amen. I want you to remember that your clothes wax not old upon thee. Hallelujah. Every day that you woke up, you had brand new clothes. Hallelujah. It may have been the same clothes that you wore yesterday, Hallelujah, but they never waxed old. Hallelujah. Some of these people were 20 years old, or most of these people, if not, uh, well, most of these people were 20 years old and younger, amen, when they 
set out on this wilderness journey, and now they're 60 years old. Hallelujah. So not only did, amen, their, their clothes not wax old on their body, amen, but their clothes had to grow with their body. Amen. What a miracle, amen, that that had to be, amen, that they got to witness every day. They got to witness their clothes growing. Amen. They got to witness their clothes, amen, renewed every day. Hallelujah. Amen. They, they, they remained like new, amen, for this whole 40-year wilderness journey. Hallelujah. Your sandals didn't get old either, amen, because your feet never swelled in those 40 years. 40 years of walking through a wilderness. 40 years of walking through desert places. Hallelujah. Amen. And your feet never swell. Praise God. Amen. Then he reminds them again, keep the commandments of God, walk in his ways, and fear him. Praise God. He's preparing them for the future. He's got them to where he wants them to be. They're humble today. Amen. Hallelujah. Their hearts are right. Amen. They are ready, amen, for this new adventure. Amen. In the promised land. Praise God. And then verse 7, hallelujah, tells us, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, amen, of fountains and of depths that spring out, amen, of valleys and of hills. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, he's talking to people, amen, who have lived in Egypt. Praise God. Amen. Not these particular people, amen, but their, their fathers and their grandfathers and, amen, many generations before them, amen. They were acquainted with Egypt. They had heard the stories of what it was like Amen. To live under Egyptian bondage. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he's talking to people who have lived in Egypt for four, over 400 years. And have now been traveling through the wilderness for 40 years. Hallelujah. Amen. He's talking to a people that knew, amen, what being dry was all about. What being thirsty was all about. Hallelujah. These people knew what it was all about. Egypt, amen, is mostly a desert. Praise God. There are parts of Egypt, amen, that only get three-quarters of an inch of rain in an entire year. Amen. Some places in Egypt register zero rainfall, amen, for an entire year. Praise God. There are certain parts of Egypt that get up to, amen, eight inches of rain in a year. So, amen, we can say that Egypt is really a desert place. Hallelujah. Amen. Considering that the state of Georgia, amen, gets somewhere around 50 inches of rain a year. Amen. Compare that to three quarters of an inch of rain, amen, every year. And it, amen, Egypt had to be a dry place. Amen. The wilderness that they had wandered in for 40 years, amen, was quite a dry place. Hallelujah. Verse 15 of chapter 8 says, Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness? Wherein they were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought. Amen. And drought. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, where there was no water. Amen. Who brought the fourth water out of the rock of Flint. Hallelujah. God is confessing to them. Hey, amen. I had to take you through this wilderness. Amen. You had to face fiery serpents. You had to face scorpions. And you had to face drought. Hallelujah. Amen. Why did they have to face these things? Amen. So that God, amen, could prove to them, amen, that he could cover them, that he could protect them. Amen. Through the wilderness experience. Praise God. Hallelujah. That wilderness was dry. I can say this. Had not God, had not God done a few miracles, amen, for Israel or for the children of God, amen, there in the wilderness. Praise God. They would have thirst to death. Amen. It was that dry in the wilderness. So God amen had to perform a few miracles. Praise God. He had to bring forth water out of the rock. Hallelujah. He had to cre uh, create water in places. Amen. Where they traveled. Praise God. Because God wanted to prove to them that he could sustain them and keep them. Amen. Other, under the direst of situations. Under the worst conditions. Hallelujah. God has proven to the children of Israel Amen, that he could sustain them and keep them and protect them from wild beasts and scorpions and serpents and everything else. Amen, that they had to face in that wilderness. Hallelujah. He's reminding them. Amen. All of these terrible things you have faced in this wilderness. Amen. Serpents, scorpions, and drought. Praise God. All of that, amen, is about to become a part of your past. 
Amen. You're fixing to move beyond that. Hallelujah. You're fixing to move beyond the drought. You're fixing to move beyond, amen, the scorpions and the serpents. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm about to take you into a promised land. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. A promised land that has brooks of water, that has fountains of water springing up in the valleys and in the hills. Praise God. Hallelujah. So all of this was about to become a part of their past. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, I'm bringing you, you into a land of brooks of water. Hallelujah. I appreciate the picture that the sister found that's showing the screen tonight. Amen. That is a pretty good sized brook of water there. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm saying that because a brook, amen, the definition of a brook is a small stream of water. Now notice, God is promising them, amen, brooks of water, amen, in their valleys and in the hills that they have to climb, God is promising them brooks of water, hallelujah, amen. And you may think tonight, you may say, well, tonight, what's the big deal? What's the big deal about, amen, brooks of water, hallelujah? Here's the big deal. Amen. To me, when I read this verse of Scripture, and I realize God's fixed to take these people in the promised land. Amen. They are acquainted with drought. They are acquainted with the miracles of God that has sustained them throughout the wilderness. Knowing without a shadow of a doubt, had God not performed those miracles, they would have died of thirst out there in that wilderness. God is promising them brooks, amen, of water. Hallelujah. Amen. These small streams of water. God is promising them that they're going to be everywhere. He said these small brooks of water are going to be in your valleys. And these small brooks of water are going to be on the hills that you have to climb. Hallelujah. Amen. They're going to be everywhere that you travel in this promised land. Hallelujah. Amen. They're going to be fountains of water. Amen. That just come up out of the ground wherever you go. Amen. Whether it's in a valley or whether it's on a hill. Amen. Wherever you go, there's going to be brooks of water. Hallelujah. The fountain. Amen. Is the spring head. Amen. Or the very beginning of the spring. Hallelujah. So God is saying to the children of Israel, Amen. If you have to go through the valley, there's going to be fountains and springs just springing up out there in your valley. If you have to climb the mountainside, there's going to be, amen, fountains there. Hallelujah. Amen. They just spring up water. Praise God. Hallelujah. On the mountain or on the hill that you're having to climb. Praise God. Every valley, every hill, there's going to be a brook. There's going to be a stream. Amen. You're not going to have to look hard. You're not going to have to look far. Amen. To find life-sustaining water. Praise God. Amen. So what God is saying to them, amen, you'll never be far, amen, from a cool drink of water. Wherever you go, amen, in this promised land. Amen. Whenever you need a drink of water, just start looking around. Amen. Start looking around. Amen. And you'll find, amen, sustainable, life-giving water. Amen. I'm promising you that in my word. Hallelujah. This water's for you. Amen. This water's for your children. This water's for your children's children. Uh, kind of sounds familiar, don't it? Amen. This water's not just for this generation. Amen. But for every, amen, uh, generation that comes after this generation. Amen. That makes up their mind. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to follow his commandments. I'm going to be obedient to him. Amen. The promise was unto every other generation that would follow theirs. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, uh, praise God. That's what he's saying. Amen. Hallelujah. This, uh, uh, this, this, these brooks of water, they're going to be for all generations that follow you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whenever you need a drink of water, just look around. You're going to find it. Praise God. This is an awesome thing concerning that they never had an abundance of water in Egypt. <laughs> it's got to be an awesome thing since they never had an abundance. They had to go to a particular place in the wilderness to get their water. Amen. That place that God did the miracle. They had to go there to get their water. Hallelujah. Amen. But now they're, they're going to they're gonna go into a land that has an abundance of water. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Now, they would have this in the new promised land. Somebody say the promised land. Amen. Water was a promise from God. Hallelujah. Amen. David wrote about the water brooks in Psalms chapter uh, 42 and verse 1. Psalm, uh, David come along, amen, hundreds of years later, and he wrote about the water brooks. He says, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. I'm sure David had read the word of God. I'm sure that he had read those scriptures where God had promised the children of Israel water brooks. Amen. And now David is confessing. Amen. Hallelujah. That his soul, amen, panteth after those water brooks. Hallelujah. He's admitting, amen, that when his soul got dry and thirsty, Amen. He started looking around. Amen. For the closest water brook. Hallelujah. Amen. Why, why would God use natural water? Amen. To speak to us concerning spiritual water. Amen. That's just God's ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Our need for natural water. Amen. Ought to cry out to us about our need for spiritual water. Hallelujah. Our need for natural water. Amen should cry out to us, amen, about our need for spiritual water. I think they say that we are supposed to drink, I don't know, how many ounces of water every day? I guess everybody says it's different, eight, eight, 16 ounce bottles or something like that. Uh, half a gallon, a gallon of water every day. I'm hearing different things said by different people, praise God. But evidently we must, we must need a lot of water. Our natural body must need it must need a lot of water to keep amen uh, to keep all the negative stuff amen hallelujah out of our bodies or to help us to process what we put in our bodies hallelujah we obviously need uh, a lot of natural water hallelujah well guess what amen on those same scales you and I need a lot of spiritual water hallelujah amen and we cannot survive without it praise God hallelujah the Bible don't say. Amen, that David got a drink, amen, from the brook where he got his five smooth stones from. Hallelujah. But you know what? The Bible don't say that he didn't get a drink of water there either. Amen. It don't mention him getting a drink of water. Amen. When he went down into that valley, amen, to choose his weapons to fight the giant with. Hallelujah. The Bible don't say he got a drink of water there, but it don't say he didn't get a drink of water there. Amen. David being the country boy that he was, amen, the shepherd boy that he was, he was familiar, amen, with getting drinks of water, amen, out of the brooks. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't doubt that David got a drink of water when he was down there choosing. Using, amen, those five smooth stones to fight the giant with. Hallelujah. If I was David and I was going to find a giant and I had a and I had the chance to get a cool drink of water, amen, I would have certainly got a drink of water. And I don't doubt that David got a drink of water, amen, when he was down there in that valley choosing those five, amen, uh, smooth stones. Why wouldn't I get a drink of water? Why didn't he get a drink of water? Amen, God allows room for our imagination, and I just imagine that David did get a drink of water. Hallelujah. He was about to go fight a giant. He was fixing to go to war, fixing to go to battle. Why wouldn't you get a drink of water? Hallelujah. Hey Amen. If you're here tonight and you're thinking, hey, hey man, I'm fixing to go to war. I'm fixing to be in a battle. I'm fixing to, hey man, fight devils. Hallelujah. Well, you better get a drink of water first. Amen. And we all need to get a drink of water tonight. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. That's spiritual water because who knows what lays out there. Amen. In our future. What, now who knows what's going to face us. Amen. Tomorrow. Hallelujah. The Bible does say he had a staff in his hand. Amen. That he got five stones and put him in his shepherd, put him in his shepherd's bag. Amen. He had a sling in his other hand. Hallelujah. But I don't doubt. Amen. That as he was putting that stone in that sling, that he was also smacking his lips. Amen. From that cool drink of water he got from that brook where he chose those stones. David said, as the heart panteth after the water brook, so doth my soul pant after thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. And remember, and I've been there, amen, those that went with us to Israel, we've been there, amen, in the valley where David had to go down in the valley to choose his stones, amen, to where he fought that giant. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. So I, I'm remembering something tonight. David was in the valley. And there was a brook throwing, flowing through the valley. And David had every opportunity that he needed to get a cool drink of water out of that brook. Amen. Before he went to fight his giant. Hallelujah. I got a scripture for you tonight. Amen. It don't prove he got a drink of water that day. Amen. But it does say something about David. Psalms 110 and verse 7 says, He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up his head. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Amen. If you live back then, amen, and you lived, amen, from one drink of water to the next drink of water, you didn't bypass a brook if you were traveling through that dry desert place. You didn't just, amen, just pass by a brook without getting a drink of water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And he, as he was getting that water, he was lifting up his head. Amen. Looking at that giant that he was about to fight. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to remember tonight that David loved water. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 15. Amen. Talks about David longing for a drink of water. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Hallelujah. Amen. David loved water. David loved water from particular places. That well at Bethlehem probably had the sweetest water, the best water, the coolest water. Hallelujah. David was just pondering in his, amen, he, he vocalized what he was pondering in his heart. Amen. Wishing that he had a drink. Amen. From the well. Amen. At Bethlehem. Praise God. I said all of that to say this tonight. Praise God. I said all of that about water. Brooks of water. In the valleys. On the hills. Wherever the, they went in this new promised land. God promised them plenty of water. Something that they'd not had. Amen. In at least 440 years. Hallelujah. They'd never had an abundance of water to drink from. Hallelujah. But I said all that to say this. Does our heart tonight pant after the water brooks? I know it's a simple question. Amen. But does our heart. Amen. Does our heart. David, David was referring to not the natural water. Amen. That the animal, the heart was drinking. Amen. But he was talking about spiritual water. Amen. So doth my heart pant after thee, O God. Hallelujah. Amen. David realized where his, amen, spiritual help came from. It came, amen, from drinking, amen, from, amen, the fountain that never run dry. Drinking from the well, amen, that never run dry. Hallelujah. Does our heart, amen, ever pant after the water brooks? Hallelujah. Amen. Do we ever get a longing from the water? Amen. From water from a certain well. Do we ever get a longing from water from a certain well? Hallelujah. Now, I realize today I'm talking to a bunch of people that's, amen, probably never drawed a bucket of water out of a well. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks sitting in here right now, adults, amen, probably have never, amen, drawn a bucket of water out of a well. Hallelujah. I remember as a kid, amen, at two years old, somewhere around two or three years old, amen, my mom and dad moved out of Porterdale. The best thing that could have ever happened to me was they moved me out of Porterdale. Hallelujah. Somebody said, could any good thing come out of Porterdale? Well, I can't make any claims of being anything good that came out of Porterdale, but I thank God that my mom and daddy got me out of Porterdale. I'm not saying I'm good, hallelujah, amen, but I am grateful that they got me out of Porterdale, hallelujah, amen. But when we moved out into the country, outside of the city of Porterdale, the little town of Porterdale there, amen, we no longer had running water. We no longer had inside plumbing, hallelujah. We didn't have any of that stuff out there. We had it in Porterdale. We didn't have it out there, hallelujah, amen. And I'm grateful that they moved us out there. Well, why in the world would you be grateful, amen, that they moved you away from running water, inside plumbing, amen, all this other stuff, go out there in the country where there was no running water? Well, hallelujah. I remember as a kid, amen, drawing water out of that well, amen. We didn't have any inside plumbing. We had to draw the water up, amen, with a bucket and a winch, 
Hallelujah. Amen. The rope went around the wheel. We would let the bucket down in the well. Amen. And it had a little handle on the side of the wheel. Amen. Or the, yeah, the little wheel there. And we would drop the bucket in, fill it up, and draw it up. Amen. To the top. Praise God. I, amen. If I had never left Portadale, I would never have no memories of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Drawing water out of the well. Hallelujah. And I do remember that always, amen, always out there in the well house, amen, there was always a, a dipper sitting there. Amen. And whoever drew the water out of the well, hallelujah, had first dibs at the water. Amen. And I cannot count the times, amen, that I drew the bucket of water up to the well, reached down in there and set it upon the concrete thing that uh, surrounded the well there. And I took the dipper, amen, I would dip it in the water and I would get the first drink of water, amen, out of that bucket. Hallelujah. It was good water. It was sweet water. It was cool water. Hallelujah. Amen. And if I ever do get to build me another house, I think I'm going to have me an old-timey well. Sister Morell sitting there looking at me like that. You can have an old-timey well as long as I got running water from another well. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sure she's not ready to go back to, but I really would like to have an old well. Amen. Or a well, praise God, with a bucket that you could drop a bucket down in and draw it up just so that my grandkids, amen, could experience drawing water from a well. Hallelujah. Amen. It may do something for them, amen, later on in life. Praise God when they, amen, understand, hallelujah, amen, that God, amen, is that water, amen, that we try to draw up, amen, every time we come to the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is the water, and we're trying to draw the water up out of the well, amen, so that we can get a fresh drink of water. Hallelujah. Amen. It certainly helped, amen, to frame my, my mindset, amen, when it came to serving God. Hallelujah. Amen. It, so if I ever build me another house, I want an old-fashioned well. Praise God. Amen. I know we get nostalgic in our old age, and you're sitting there thinking, oh, that's just, amen, nostalgia. Well, it may be. Amen. But you hang on. Hallelujah. I may have a well for it's over with. Amen. All I'm saying is, we all need to remember that there's a brook, that there's a well, amen, where the water still runs clear and cool. Amen. There's still, there's still a well. There's still people out there in the country that still draw water out of a well, even though you've never done it yourself. Amen. Maybe you need to go out there and drive through the country and see an old well stop and ask people, can you draw a bucket of water out of the well? So you can experience for yourself. Hallelujah. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 47 and verse 1. Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. Now, when I, when I, every time I read this verse of Scripture, I think about the wisdom of God. This was written in Old Testament times. Amen. Written, amen, for people, hallelujah, that had to, to, to live from brook to brook to brook if they were traveling on a journey. Amen. They had to stop at every brook that they come across to get a drink of water. Amen. To fill up their water buckets or whatever they took. Amen. For their animals on their journey. They lived. Amen. They actually lived when they traveled from brook to brook to brook. That's, that's, that's the Old Testament times, right? Amen. But Ezekiel is writing here. He said, After, afterward he brought me again into the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, uh, down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Hallelujah, Amen. What what is exactly Ezekiel describing here? Ezekiel is having a vision, Amen, of the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe Ezekiel is having a vision, Amen, of a future house of God. Come on now. Hallelujah. In a period of time when people are not acquainted with drawing water from a well, filling a bucket up with water and drawing it to the top. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so many amen, of us here today that have never done that. Praise God. So, hallelujah. So, Ezekiel prophesies, amen, hallelujah, that there'll come a day, amen, that the water 
amen, will flow under, under the threshold of the house of God. It will begin flowing in all kinds of directions, amen, from under, amen, the threshold of the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen, a amen, because God knew that there would be a day, hallelujah, that you and I would have all the water that we could ever drink at home. Amen, that we wouldn't be a people walking around worrying about water, concerned about water. Amen. So Ezekiel in his prophecy connects water to the house of God. I don't guess y'all are getting what I'm seeing. Ezekiel connects water to the house of God. Hallelujah. And behold. Amen. Ezekiel says here, behold. I, you know, I, I'm trying to explain to you what I'm seeing in this vision. Hallelujah, and he, he saw a tremendous thing there, and I'm not going to read it all to you. Amen, but Ezekiel got to see it. Amen, but Ezekiel did not get to drink from it. Amen, that water that he saw flowing under the threshold of the house of God, amen, was not for him. Amen, it was for future generations. Hallelujah. It was for New Testament generations. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 7 and 8 says, But it shall be one day. It shall be one day. Which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Evening time it shall be light. All right? And it shall be in that day. What day? In the evening time. That living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. So Zechariah's having a vision. Amen. Of a future. Praise God. In a day. Amen. Call the evening time. Hallelujah. Amen. When living waters are going to. Flow out, amen, from Jerusalem, hallelujah, in every direction, praise God. Amen. In the evening time, that's our time if you hadn't connected the dots yet. Amen. That's exactly where we are living, in the evening time. Amen. So the promise of water, amen, was not just for those people that lived in the wilderness, those people that were called out of Egypt, amen, but water is promised to those of us, amen, that live in the evening time. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said summer and winter, this water's going to flow. This water's going to flow all the year long. Amen. It's going to flow, amen, winter and summer. Hallelujah. It's going to flow all the time. Amen. When it starts flowing out, amen, uh, from Jerusalem, amen, it's going to start flowing and it's going to keep flowing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't it awesome, amen, that on the day of Pentecost, praise God, when, amen, they were all in that upper room, amen, and they, amen, and that water started flowing there. Praise God. Hallelujah. And they all got a drink from that water, from that well. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that water that has been flowing for over nearly 2,000 years now is still flowing to us today. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to flow. It's going to flow. Amen. Year long. Winter and summer. Hallelujah. Being a Baptist or being raised a Baptist. I'm not a Baptist now. I got to clarify myself. Being raised a Baptist as a kid. Amen. It became quite uh, obvious to me even as a child. Amen. That Baptist folks don't have revivals in the fall. Baptist folks don't have revivals in the winter. Baptist folks don't have revival in the, in the springtime. Hallelujah. In the Baptist church, amen, and probably still in a lot of Baptist church today, there's only one week out of the year that you get to have revival in your Baptist church. Amen. And that was either in June or July, right dead in the middle of the summertime. Amen. Our little Baptist church would have a little revival. Praise God. But no, no, no. They wouldn't even, amen, consider revival. Hallelujah. Any other time of the year, it had to be summertime. Praise God. Well, I'm glad that I was delivered from that. I'm glad that I'm no longer, amen, considered a Baptist. Praise God. Amen. And why is that, Brother Morel? Because now, amen, I've, did, I've been delivered from that idea, and I believe that revival can happen any time or all the time, amen, every day that we live, we can have a revival in God. 
Amen. Revival's not contained to one week in the middle of the summer. Amen. Revival can happen anytime. Amen. You can revive, be revived at any time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It, it, it could break out here tonight. Praise God. If we're not real careful. Hallelujah. You can have a revival tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. What do you mean, Brother Ray? If you long for it bad enough, if you long for it, amen, if we thirst for it, Hallelujah. We can have revival on a daily basis. We can be renewed every day, which is what the Bible tells us, amen, that we need to try to do. Amen. Be renewed, amen, by every day. Hallelujah. That we live. Praise God. We need to try to have revival. Amen. But now on this side of Calvary, here's what I need to know. Amen. John 4 and verse 10 says this. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked ask of him. He would have given thee living water. Hallelujah. Here's what I need to know on this side of Calvary. Since I'm not living in a barren land, since I'm living in a state that gets 50 plus inches of rain every year or somewhere thereabout, Hallelujah. since I'm not concerned about, amen, drawing water out of a well, Amen. I can go in my house. I can turn on a faucet, turn on a shower. Amen. And hopefully if the well pump's still working, it'll pump water to my house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Here's what I need to know today. Jesus, amen, is my source of living water. I got all the natural water that I can drink. I've got all the natural water that I could ever, amen, have need of. Hallelujah. Amen. But on this side of Calvary, all of that points to, amen, Jesus being, amen, our living a water. Hallelujah. So that's what I need to know. That's what you need to know tonight. If you're thirsty, you got to go to Jesus today. Hallelujah. If you're spiritually thirsty and dry and going through a drought, you got to go to Jesus. Oh, yeah. Wednesday night, Brother Morell, just calm down a little bit. I have been accused of trying too hard. And I know I do sometimes. I felt like the last message I preached, I was just really trying too hard. Amen. I don't want to come in here tonight and act like I'm trying too hard to get my point across. Amen. But I am here to tell you, Jesus is my source of living water. And he is your source of living water. Hallelujah. John chapter 7, verse 37, 38 says this. In the last day. The great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man, somebody say any man. Talking about any man, woman, boy, or girl. Anybody that's in mankind. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Who are we going to get our drink from today? We got to go to Jesus to get our drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Praise God. I'm telling you. Amen. God wants to fill us up with so much water that it overflows out of us. Amen. So that we can help somebody else out with a drink every once in a while. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to drink of water, spiritual water, amen, come to me and drink, Jesus said. I'll give you living water. Hallelujah. Jesus is the water your soul is thirsty for. Praise God. Probably, you, probably you've already drunk, amen, six or seven of your bottles of water today, and you feel hydrated. <laughs> amen. You don't feel dehydrated. When you come in here and you're dehydrated, then you start having all kinds of issues, and health issues, and you feel bad, and you feel weary, and you feel t torn, and amen, and, 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 and worn out all the time when you're dehydrated, hallelujah, but when you come in here and you're hydrated with natural water, you feel good about going to church, you feel good about yourself, amen, it makes you feel good, amen, because hey, it just helps to regulate our body, amen, so that's why we drink water, hallelujah, amen, but in the house of God, Jesus is our water. He's the water your soul is thirsty for. Jesus is the water that all of these scriptures point toward. David wanted to drink of water from a certain well at Bethlehem. He got to pondering on that, that well at Bethlehem. And he voiced his musings. And men that were close to him heard him. And they went to the well at Bethlehem to fetch him. A glass of water or a pitcher of water or whatever they had. Hallelujah. He wanted a drink of water from a certain well at Bethlehem. 
Hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to say this because this is the way I look at church tonight. I look at church as the same way that David looked at the well of Bethlehem. I look at higher praise tabernacle. I look at church as being the well that I want to get my drink from. Hallelujah. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to go to the bar anymore. Amen. I haven't been to a bar in over 40 years. You know, but still, you know, I, I don't want to get a drink. Amen. From any other source. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to get a drink. Amen. From the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I went to the house of God and Amen. In, in March of 1979, I got, a, I got a taste of the water, amen, that I could have when I went to church. Hallelujah. I got a drink of that water. Amen. God, amen, uh, blessed me and, amen, and, 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 and put that water down inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and that one taste of water has kept me coming back to the well, amen, for over 40 years now. Hallelujah. Amen. One drink of that water has brought me back for over 40 years to the house of God. Hallelujah. Whether it's, amen, this church or, amen, a church that I'm visiting somewhere or, amen, or, or whatever. Hallelujah. As long as it is a good apostolic church and I'm there, I can get a drink, amen, from that same well. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the water that we drink in the house of God is good water. Amen. It's good water. Hallelujah. I get, I'll get. i never get tired of drinking this water. Amen. In 40 plus years now, I found water, amen, to be just where God said that it would be. God told them, amen, if you're going through the valley, you're going to find fountains and brooks of water while you're traveling through those valleys. Can I confess to you tonight that I've been through a lot of valleys in 40 years, amen, but I've never been through a valley, amen, where God did not supply the water that I needed to get me through that valley. I've climbed a lot of hills, I've climbed a lot of mountains, amen, in the 40 plus years I've been serving God, but I've never, amen, I, I'm not saying that I enjoy climbing mountains and I enjoy climbing hills, sometimes it's weary. Sometimes it's weary going through that valley. Praise God. It's wearisome, amen, for us to get in a, a long valley or a high hill, hallelujah, or mountain that we have to climb, hallelujah, amen. But again, I have to confess to you, amen, that I've never climbed a mountain, amen, where God left that mountain barren, amen, of the water that, was, that I needed to sustain me, amen, while I was climbing that mountain, praise God. Hallelujah. I found water in every valley that I walked through. I found water on every hill or mountain that I've had to climb. God's promise to them has become a promise to us. Hallelujah. Amen. We just got to keep ourselves coming back to the well. We got to remind ourselves, we got to keep coming back to the well. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the water is sweeter there, the water is better there. Hallelujah. I got to keep coming back to the well. Amen. The word that he gave to Israel 3,500 years ago, the promise, amen, that there will be brooks of water, amen, for them anywhere they went in the promised land is still good for us today. Hallelujah. So, amen, I guess I need to put it this way. In, if you are in the valley, and I know that some of us are, Amen. If you are in the valley, amen, and you're growing tired and weary, you need to open your eyes and you need to start looking for that water source. Because I promise you, amen, God's going to supply that drink of water that you need to get you all the way through that valley. Hallelujah. Amen. So his prom their promise has become our promise. Hallelujah. It's still good for us today. If you're climbing a mountain, Amen. If sweat's dripping off your brow, if you're having a hard time getting over that hill. Amen. If you're dry, if you're getting dry, if you're getting a little thirsty, hallelujah, you just need to open your eyes and you need to realize, hey, amen, amen. There's a water source around here somewhere. Amen, because God promised me that water source. Hallelujah. You may have to go to prayer to find it. Amen. You may have to fast a little bit to find it. Amen. You, you may need to make sure that you're at the house of God every service that you can be to find it, but God's going to supply that water. Amen. He's promised us. I'm moving you into a territory. 
I'm moving you into a place, hallelujah, where there's going to be brooks of water in every valley and on every mountain. Praise God. Ask him tonight, amen, and he will give you living water. Take the word of God, amen, for what it says. Amen. Take it verbatim. Amen. Ask him, amen, for the water that you need tonight and see if he don't give it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about the spiritual water that we call Jesus. He's the water, amen, that we drink from. He's the well that we drink from. Amen. It's water that we're going to be drinking even when we get in over into eternity with God. When life down here is said and done, amen, and we find ourselves in eternity with God. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 17 says this. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Who's he talking about? He's talking about us. Amen. Shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. This water that we enjoy so much today, amen, is going to be water that we're going to continue to drink when we get in, into eternity. When we get to heaven, amen, to spend eternity with God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's going to be water there for us to drink. Praise God. Again, Sister Tabitha, thank you for this picture that you found. It kind of fits right into the purpose tonight. This picture shows valleys. It shows hills, amen, and it shows a water source, hallelujah, flowing right through that valley, amen. Sometimes we may have to look, sometimes we, amen, get distracted, amen, when we're going through valleys and trying to climb hills and mountains, amen, hallelujah. We get distracted and we get weary, we get to saying, oh me and woe is me, amen, when we should be, amen, putting on our, amen, our, uh, the eyes of the Lord, Amen. We should be praying, God, anoint my eyes with eye salve so that I can see that water source. Amen. That's very near to me right now. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, amen, as we get ready to stand to our feet, praise God. I'm just going to close right there. Hallelujah. I'm glad as a child that I, ha I had the experience of drawing water out of a well. Amen. Drinking water, amen, uh, from the dipper. Praise God. Is anybody in here never drunk water from a dipper? Y'all ain't being truthful. Brother Doug ain't never drunk water from a dipper. Anybody else never drunk water from a dipper? Sister Aaron has never drunk water from a dipper. Praise God. Well, you're missing something. Amen. You need to buy you a dipper. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You need to go find somebody with a well. Draw you up a bucket of water and get a drink from that dipper. Praise God. Oh, yeah, it was a community dipper, too. Everybody in the house drunk from the same dipper. Amen. We didn't think about germs back then the way we think about germs today. Hallelujah. We just think about getting a drink of water. Amen. Sometimes we come to church, amen, thinking about germs. Amen. Thinking about everything else other than thinking about getting that drink of water that we need. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to get everything else off of our mind tonight and concentrate Amen. On getting that dipper and dipping it into that bucket and getting us a drink of water here tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to do it by faith. Get the dipper. <laughs> oh, we're just play acting. Hallelujah. Get the dipper. Here's the bucket. Here's my dipper. Amen. I'm going to dip down in the bucket. Hallelujah, now I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to get me a drink, amen, from that dipper, hallelujah. Amen, that cool, amen, life-sustaining water, hallelujah, that God wants me to drink from every day of my life, hallelujah. Amen, we need to do it, we need to plan on doing it, we need to make up our mind that we're going to get what we need from God. Hallelujah, even on this Wednesday night service, you don't have to go home thirsty. Amen, even on this Wednesday night church service. You don't have to go on thirsty. You can get a drink right now. Hallelujah. If you'll just close your eyes and if you'll just lift your hands to the Lord and say, God, amen, I'm going through a drought. I'm going through a thirsty time here. Hallelujah. I need you to, amen, to fill my cup. I need you to fill my dipper tonight. Hallelujah. God, amen, even if you have to do it miraculously tonight, God, I need you to take my cup, take my dipper and fill it up tonight, God so that I can get a cool drink from heaven's fountain tonight. 
Hallelujah. God, I need a, I need a drink. I need a drink. I need a drink tonight in this house. All you need tonight is a drink from heaven's well. Come on. All you need tonight is a drink. Amen. From the well that never runs dry. Hallelujah. Oh, God, tonight. Oh, God, tonight. Live in our hearts, God. Hallelujah. With every eye closed and everybody reaching out to God. Hallelujah. I want you to imagine in your mind and in your heart that you're getting that drink that you need. Amen. I want you to start looking around for that water source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's here tonight. That water source is here tonight. That water is still flowing. Amen. Under the thresholds of the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you thirsty for it? Amen. Are you desperate for that drink? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God, are you desperate? Are you longing for that drink? Amen. Tonight in this house, God, is here. Hallelujah. God, tonight. God, tonight, Lord. Let every thirsty soul get a drink tonight. Let every thirsty soul get a drink here tonight, God. Hallelujah. God, let us find the help that we need in this house. God, let us find the help that we need tonight, God, in this house. Hallelujah. He's all oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Jesus is all I need. See it in your mind. Jesus See it in your heart. Hallelujah. Just picture it in your mind tonight. I need Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may need that drink of water tonight from that you may need that drink because there may be a giant standing in the valley right ahead of you. Hallelujah. It may have been that cool drink of water that David got. Amen. Hallelujah. That sustained him. Amen. As he ran through that valley toward Goliath. Hallelujah. 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 You may be facing a Goliath. You may be facing a giant tonight standing out there somewhere in your valley challenging you defying you, hallelujah, to come, amen, and do battle with him tonight. I'm telling you, if you get a drink from that brook tonight, hallelujah, amen, it'll drive out all of the fear and all of the anxieties and all of the troubled mind, amen, that the enemy wants you to have tonight. It'll drive all that away. And you with confidence, amen, can rise up from that brook and you can run towards your enemies tonight and conquer them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, help us to be conquerors. Help us to be overcomers. Help us to be more than conquerors tonight, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're all I need tonight. I need a drink from you. I need a drink from you. Let's give God just another minute of our time. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm not saying you're going to shout when you get that drink of water. I'm not going to say that you're going to run the aisles when you get that drink of water here tonight. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that you're going to do anything out of the ordinary. Just get the drink of water that you need. It will sustain you tomorrow. It will stay you. The next, sustain you the next day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is all I need. Oh, yes, Jesus. Is all I need. Come on, do we realize that tonight? Jesus is that tonight? all.
Shake hands with somebody close to you tonight. Tell them how glad you were to see them at church on Wednesday night. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Hallelujah. I know that, amen, that uh, somebody heard from the Lord tonight. You need a drink.